Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont, and I got a rant for you today. But before we jump on in, I want to thank you all for your continued support of our channel. If you haven't done so yet, please be sure to like, subscribe, and follow, and also become a member of our family uh, so you can get that live membership content, as well as jump on over to Rudy's Rant on YouTube and subscribe over there. Also, as we will do, I'm doing different content on that channel. Let's jump on in on the topic at hand. Christy Sides was recently let go. I talked about that uh, this weekend when she got uh, terminated. Thank the Lord. But Christy Sides, she is living in a state of delusion. She really thinks that she did something special. She really thinks she did something special while she was the coach of the Indiana Fever. She inherited, if you want to be technical, let's we can be be completely technical. If you want to be technical, she inherited a team that went five and thirty-one. And in her first year, They went 13 and 27 and finished 10th. And from there, she, in her second year, her team went 20 and 20. So I guess if you look at it from specifically from a record standpoint and you view it that way, she actually can sit here and say, yes, I did actually leave it better than you found it. And that is what she tweeted on X. Leave it better than you found it, peace sign emoji. And there you have it. Christy Sides is basically telling you she left the Indiana Fever in a better position than when she became head coach. Okay, I guess. Clearly, Indiana Fever did not feel that she was the right person to continue in this position. As Kelly Kroskoff said, we are incredibly thankful to Coach Sides for embracing the challenge of leading us through an integral transition period over the last two seasons, while also positioning us well for future growth. While decisions like these are never easy, it is also imperative that we we remain bold and assertive in the pursuit of our goals, which includes maximizing our talent and bringing another WNBA championship back to Indiana. Coach Sides was an incredible representative of the Fever and our community, and we wish her nothing but success in the future. Understand this key phrase, maximizing our talent and bringing another W. Heck, screw the rest of it maximizing our talent three words maximizing our talent in the opinion of kelly Kroskoff, christy sides did not maximize the talent so while you may sit here and say you left it better than you found it that's not the opinion of the people who cut your check In fact, they think that you underachieved with the talent that you had. You stand on this podium of defense. Your first season, the Indiana Fever defense gave 85.1 points per game. Last season, the defense got worse, 87.7 points per game. But the team scoring went up from 81 points per game to 85 points per game. But your calling card is defense. When they went 5-31, and 31, they gave up 89.1 points per game. What was... Christy Sides' biggest, what, what, what was her impact to the franchise? 
What was it specifically? I can go look at their statistics and I can look at the player stats and I can see who did what. I can look at it right now and tell you that in 2022, Kelsey Mitchell averaged 18-4, 4.2, and led the team in assists with 4.2 assists and two rebounds. That's what she did on 43.8% shooting, 40.9% from three. I can also show you that Nalissa Smith averaged 13.5 points, 7.9 boards, on 41.9% shooting, which is awful for someone who's six foot three. She was a rookie. Then you move into 2023, Kelsey Mitchell. So Kelsey Mitchell's actual scoring numbers went down in Christy Side's first season. You added Aaliyah Boston. Aaliyah Boston was of the number one pick in the draft. She was the rookie of the year. But what exactly did Christy Sides do for that? She did nothing. She happened to be the coach. Aaliyah Boston was the number one pick in the draft. You won the draft lottery. So what exactly did you do? How exactly did you leave it in a better position than when you got it? You got new players who were better players. And yes, your record got better because now you had a legitimate post player who averaged 14 and a half points per game, 8.4 rebounds. Melissa Smith averaged 15.5 points, 9.2 rebounds. Kelsey Mitchell, her numbers dropped across the board. Her points dropped, her assists dropped. Her field goal percentage was basically the same. Her three-point shooting dropped. These are basic facts. And then you have another draft lottery that you win again. So this is all the work that you've done. You've won draft lotteries. You didn't do it. However, the ping pong balls went, did it. And what happens? Kelsey Mitchell's scoring goes up. Why? Because she has someone giving her layups. Kelsey Mitchell's shooting percentage skyrockets to almost 47%. Her three-point shooting back up over 40. Sure, her assist numbers were down because she didn't have the ball in her hands to, 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 or to move the offense. All you did was inherit two back-to-back first-round pick, top number one picks in the draft. You got Caitlin Clark in the second one, and you – did your best to make her be as bad as she could be in the first 15 games. You clearly don't know how to... Uh, Melissa Smith, for as bad as she was this year, she wasn't that bad last year. I mean, the girl averaged 15.5 and 9.2 on 47.7% shooting. And this year, she goes down to 10.6, 7.1 on 50 and 48% shooting. But we also saw the glaring holes in Alyssa Smith's game. She's just a bad defensive player. She has no real post moves. And she is a double agent when she plays against Connecticut. And now she magically wants to remain on the Indiana Fever when she had scrubbed the Indiana Fever from her social media profiles prior to Christy Size being fired. Maybe her beef was with Christy Sides. I don't even care. I don't even care. Melissa Smith needs to be gone. But Christy Sides got players. She didn't make the ones she had she had better. Kelsey Mitchell got better because Caitlin Clark played next to her and got her wide open shots. Not complicated. Not at all complicated. You didn't leave anything better. Caitlin Clark made you look better. Aaliyah Boston made you look better. Had nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with you. 
but you think it did, and your ego tell your ego tells you it did. But the darn president of the team says, nah, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't maximize talent. You didn't maximize skill. In fact, you crippled skill and you crippled talent. Celeste Taylor never got a chance to play on this team, on a team that was void of defense. Magically, Celeste Taylor played in the playoffs for the Phoenix Mercury. She played 17 minutes in game two, 12 minutes in game one. She played. And she did a decent job. She had two assists and three assists. She made herself felt. You can go look at the season. I mean, she she played in Seattle, L.A., Chicago. I'm, I'm just looking right now at the stats for Celeste Taylor. We never saw this woman play. I mean, yeah, she played with a bunch of teams. She went from Indiana to Phoenix, Phoenix to Connecticut, Connecticut back to Phoenix. But for Phoenix, she played 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 games. And she was playing 12, 9, 9, 22, 33, 22, 21, 30, 30, 30. This one was playing minutes, heavy minutes. She an, is she an offensive juggernaut? No, but she was a defensive player on a team that's lacking defense. And for the Indiana Fever, she played four minutes, one minute, three minutes, seven minutes, one minute. She played less minutes. She played less minutes combined in those five games she played for the Fever than she played her first game with Phoenix. I'm sorry. Yeah, with Phoenix. She played 24 minutes. And that game happened to be against Indiana, no less. Where she had five assists. Clearly, she's pretty decent, and you never used her. You didn't maximize talent. You have no idea what talent is. No idea. We never saw Victor Victoria Saxton play. We have no idea what she really can do. We know what Grace Berger can't do. We know what Christy Wallace can't do as you stuff Christy Wallace down our throats for the first 15 games of the season. We know how you bench DMP Lexi Hull for a number of games this year. She missed six games, those are all DNPs. And how at the beginning of the year she was playing 12, 2, 13, 18, 6, 7, 8, 20, 10, 21, 8, 11, 4, 13, 5. I mean, this woman ended up being a major contributor. This woman played 40 minutes in September in a game. She played the in an overtime game. She was playing big minutes. And you didn't notice this in the first 15 games of the season, how important she was to your team? You didn't maximize talent. You didn't leave it better. They got better in spite of you. There are people that are tone deaf, and there are people that are tone deaf. And Christy Sides is tone deaf. She's oblivious to reality. And I get it. She's going to have to say that she made them better. And she didn't make them better for shit. Their defense got worse. In fact, in fact, if we want to go there, let's go there. Let's go look at their schedule. Let's go look at how many points per game they gave up. And I'm doing this off cuff. I did not prepare for this. So I might be wrong. But I don't think I am because I know they were giving up tons of points down the stretch. 92, 109, 78, 86, 100, 99, 86, 93, 81, 80, 79, 90. 
I'm going back. That's to the Minnesota. Ring. That's on August 21st. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's 12 games divided by 12. Their defense in the final 12 games was worse than their defense when they couldn't beat anybody at the beginning of the year. You maximize talent. Your defense got worse as the season went on. I can go look at the scores and know that your defense got worse. Let's go look at the first 12 games of the season. So 89.41, 92, 102, 91, 88, 83, 73, 99, 88, 103, 70. Oh, their defense was pretty bad at the end of the year, too. <laughs> Divided by 12. Their defense was 89.66 the first 12 games and 89.41 the last 12 games. So let's check out the middle 16, since that's the what's left. I'm going to guess that's a lot better. 89, 84, 83, 89, 84, 83, 81, 79, 87, 89, Let's see here. What, what number am I at? I'm at, I'm at. Yeah, let's go the other direction. It's easier for me to go that way. Let's go. 75, 89, 101, 74, 86. It's not, it's not going to be much better. I can tell you that. So they averaged, they gave up 84.68 points per game in that middle 16. So their defense got better in the middle part and got worse again in the end of the season when they were actually playing better, scoring more. But defense just got worse and worse and worse. There are a lot of things that happened during that period of time. But you didn't make that team better. You didn't leave it better than it was. That defense is still trash. You didn't adjust to your talent you didn't maximize your talent it's basic man if they thought you were the coach that could help them win you'd still be the coach but because they didn't you're gone you're out the door you're bye-bye so don't let that door hit you on the ass on your way out now let's talk about what the options are for the Indiana Fever. Naturally, I think Stephanie White, now that she's parted ways, parted ways with Connecticut. She wasn't fired. I believe that there's already a contract in place for Stephanie White with Indiana. If there isn't, I would be shocked. I'd be absolutely shocked. But if you want to give me four or five candidates, I'm going to tell you these are the candidates. Stephanie White. I would, that's my number one candidate would be Lisa Bluter, period. She knows Caitlin Clark better than anything. Lisa Bluter would be the number one pick. But I don't think she's going to unretire at this point. So you got Stephanie White. You have, you have Mark Jackson. You have Mark Jackson. I don't particularly care to go to the direction of men because I don't think men should be coaching women's basketball. But you have Mark Jackson. And then you have Cheryl Miller, who's another one. And then you also have, um, I'm going to be real. I mean, the Dallas Wings coach, uh, Trisha Tram Tram Trammell, 
She knows how to run an all. She, she her team didn't win a lot, but she sure as hell knows how to maximize offensive ability. Like she knows how to maximize their offense because she sure as hell maximized offense with the wings. They didn't win a lot, but and their defense was was horrible. But they also dealt with a lot of injuries last year. However, they max. I mean, you can't. She knew who to, who 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 needed to have the ball. She knew who her best player was. Obviously, Saba Lee only playing 15 games last year hurt them a great deal. Howard only playing 26 games. Like you had people missing games all year, that hurt them. But she knew who needed to shoot the ball. There wasn't a question about don't shoot the ball. Whereas Christy Sides was trying to play Dean Smith on Michael Jordan and not let her shoot early on. She averaged 12 shots. She averaged 12 shots a game the first half of the season. Heck, I don't know what she finished with, but it couldn't have been more than 14. Kaylin Clark, by the end of the year, averaged 14 and a half shots per game and averaged 19.2 points while not getting calls for free th- for fouls to get free throws. And you know she's fouled almost every freaking possession. But I think the coach will end up being Stephanie White. And I think you're going to see a massive transition from this team. Let's see who they can draft. Let's see who they get in free agency. But you're going to see a massive sh- turning of the corner. Will they win the championship next season? We'll see. But they're going to be a much better team. Connecticut will be a much worse team. Because I don't think you're going to see any of those players coming back. I don't think Alyssa Smith. I don't think Alyssa Thomas comes back. I don't think Dewana Bonner goes back. And you know that they're going to play together. They're going to play together. They're probably looking to play together somewhere. They're both unrestricted free agents. I would be surprised. I'd also be interested to see if a player like Alyssa Thomas and Dewana Bonner want to play in Indiana. After they make the cut. See, I think some of the things that have been said by these players hurts them free agency wise. It hurts them because they have voiced such nasty shit about the Indiana Fever fan base that it would make you look like a complete and utter hypocrite and clown if you decided you wanted to play for the Indiana Fever. Because then you'll realize that all the shit you said was completely out of line completely off off base and flat out wrong but hey you know how that goes people talk a lot of shit and then they realize i was wrong so i'm curious to see what where some of these free agents end up i still like the idea of tina charles for the fever but christy sides do not let the door hit you on the ass on the way out because you did not leave this better than it was when you got here you just happened to be blessed into getting two number one picks in the draft and if you can't get better with two number one picks in the draft back to back that's that's that would be pretty damning to any coach in the world but christy sides can believe what she wants and i see reports of her potentially being the next chicago sky coach please go please go please go please go Let's see how much Angel Reese loves that shit. I got nothing left on this one. Please let me know what your thoughts in the comments are. Please be sure to like, subscribe, follow. Become a member. Ring that bell. Also jump on over to Rudy's Rant on YouTube. Subscribe there. I thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. Come on now.